So how much of a problem is signal blockage going to be at 28 gigahertz in the millimeter wave band for 6G mobile communications? Well, let's take a look. I've got some equipment here from TMY Tech, and it's a great setup for testing things at millimeter wave. So we have an array here that is transmitting and a receiver over here. And if I turn the array so that it faces to the receiver, then I've got it set up with equal phases of all of the four uh, elements. And so it's forming a beam directly towards the receiver. And on the software here, you can see that the signal is nice and strong. If I put my hand in the way, immediately the signal drops. Now we are used to signals for mobile communications and also Wi-Fi below six gigahertz. And we experience that the signals travel through walls, they reflect off walls with multipath and pot even pot uh, potentially off trees and things like this. So we don't experience this kind of blockage at those frequencies. But at higher frequencies in the millimeter wave band, 28 gigahertz, even my hand creates a big problem for the signal. So let's see how big a problem this is going to be. What about a pad, a paper notepad? Well, that has also got an effect, not as much as my hand had, um, but that's losing, what were we at the peak? Here we were at minus 23.8 dBm. And if I put the pad in the way, we drop down to minus 25. So that's a 2 dB loss from the pad. What about a single piece of paper? Let's try this. Here we have a single piece of paper and we're seeing not much problem from one piece of paper. So it obviously has to be more than a single piece, but what about 10 pieces? So I folded out 10 pieces here. And if I put 10 pieces of paper in, we do get an appreciable drop in the signal strength. So the signal, gets absorbed by even just 10 pieces of paper to an appreciable level uh, of a couple of dB. So that's uh, gonna be a, potentially a big problem for millimeter wave communications. Let's look at some other potential blockers. Let's look at this piece of metal. It's a very thin piece of metal. What if we put that in? Immediately blocks the entire signal. So that's gonna be a problem. Any kind of metal walls, if you're in a lift, something like that. What about something so thin as a pen, for example? So if I put a pen in between the, the path here, even a pen causes 5 dB of loss. That's a significant amount of loss for something so narrow as a pen. And uh, even if we move it up close to the transmitter, you think some of those beams, because as I said before, they've got four channels here for four channel beam former, some of them will pass beside the pen if I put the pen very close, uh, but we're still getting a loss compared to not having the pen. What about some other things? What about if it's not, the pen was essentially, you could imagine completely blocking the receiver. What about uh, something like a potato masher? And I'm gonna put it in so that the gap of the potato masher is in the line here. And we see even that causes a loss in power. So the signal is attenuated, even though there's a gap here, an air gap for the signal to propagate through just by having a metal object in between. So this is gonna be significant that it needs to be dealt with in 6G mobile if these frequencies are gonna be used for communications. So I'm gonna now put a book in the way and let's see what we can do to overcome the blockage by using electronic beam steering and seeing what we can get off reflectors. So now what I'm gonna do is change the parameters here so that the beam is steered to 30 degrees. So to do that, I change these numbers here to be 15, 30, and 45. And if you'd like to know more about uh, how I came up with these numbers, then check out the other video uh, where I explored beam forming. So now we've steered the beam in this direction, 30 degrees, of course it's dropped because it's no longer going straight through the book anymore, um, but it's also going straight out into the air. Now, clearly there's no reflectors in this room that are causing the signal to arrive at the receiver. Let's see what happens when I put the metal sheet as a reflector and we get a gain. So now the 30 degree electronic beam is now reflecting off this metal sheet and coming to the receiver. Uh, so it's, but you can see that it's not the same strength as we had when we had the direct line of sight path without the book and no blockage.
So you're always going to pay a penalty when there is blockage. Let's see if I change the angle of this sheet here, then the signal uh, can go up and down. Some of the angles are better than others. And by changing this angle here, effectively we are seeing the beam width from the transmitter because uh, at different angles, different reflections will make it to the receiver. And of course the beam width is about, as we learned in the other video, about 24 to 30 degree beam width. Okay, so uh, we can have reflectors if they're nice and metal, but let's imagine in uh, real life what we're going to be having for reflectors. So I've got a paver here, which is a cement paver. It's similar to what many buildings are constructed out of. And let's see if I hold this up, whether or not I can get any kind of signal bouncing off. Now we can, you see that we can get some signal coming through, but it's not as strong as when we had the metal sheet. In fact, it's a long way down, and it's a long way down from the value if you had a direct line of sight. So reflected paths are nowhere near as strong as direct paths with millimeter wave. It's much more uh, of a difference compared to frequencies below six gigahertz. So that is definitely something that is going to be a real challenge for 6G. Of course, at 28 gigahertz, there's a lot more frequency available. And so there's a real opportunity if we can overcome all of these challenges. It'll require very fast adaptive beam forming to recognize when blockages happen, immediately switch to other paths, which are reflective paths, and be able to monitor where those paths are so that you can uh, switch there quickly and so on. Um, and as we've seen, something as narrow as a pen can cause blockage. So this is gonna happen quite a lot and it's gonna be quite a challenge. If you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. As I mentioned, you might want to check out the video I made recently where I use this equipment and actually explore beam widths. And if you check out the show notes, you'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.